Under the leadership of President and CEO Craig Samet, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota has been a recognized leader and partner in advancing health in communities across the state and advancing health equity. Today, we will hear from Chris Wrighton, Vice President of Medicaid, and Dr. Amy Fendrick, Senior Medical Director. They will share their efforts to strengthen and extend the community health worker infrastructure in Minnesota communities, as well as how their work helps to reduce health disparities and bridge cultural and language barriers. We are so fortunate that they can be with us today to add their perspectives and expertise to this conversation. Dr. Fendrick, I'll start by turning it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to start by thanking Denise for that excellent presentation on CHWs uh, and, and putting the perspective that, that's needed uh, for CHWs. And I want to thank Nickham for inviting Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota to share our health plan experience with CHWs. Um, I just want to clarify that that we're an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. So when Chris or I speak of Blue Cross, we're specifically referring to Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota. So um, in this slide, we're looking specifically at health disparities in Minnesota with data from 2019 that was published in 2020. And uh, what's interesting is you can see at the top of the slide, Minnesota has historically been ranked as one of the healthiest states in the nation. However, when you dig into the data that's presented on the left side of this slide, Minnesota ranks as, as one of the worst states with respect to health disparities. Uh, as you can see, Native Americans and Blacks experience homelessness at 17 times that of the white population. Blacks experience disparities in nearly all of the health indicators. And Minnesota was 43rd in the incidence of adults with mental illness that report unmet needs. So when you look at the right side of the slide and you see the health impacts, you see 65% of Minnesotans are obese or overweight. $5 billion, the estimated human and economic costs associated with alcohol use in Minnesota which is 17 uh, greater than, than alcohol tax revenue. 17% of Minnesota women consumed at least half a serving of alcohol during their last pregnancy. So there's tremendous health disparities where in a state that is recognized as being healthy. So um, in our in the next slide here, uh, we look at what happened with COVID-19. And as Denise noted, uh, we see what occurred in populations during the COVID pandemic. COVID illuminated health disparities in our state, in our nation, and in the world. Uh, in Minnesota, Blacks represent 7% of the state population, but 9% of the documented COVID cases and 12% of hospitalizations and ICU admission. Uh, and I would uh, guess that that 9% is an underestimate by uh, a fairly uh, sizable amount of COVID cases. Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander residents test positive at twice the rate of white residents of Minnesota. So speak about a, a call to arms. In our next slide, uh, COVID and the disparity that was laid so plain created an urgent need to evaluate how we could reach all members in all communities. And we needed to act quickly and we needed to figure out how to reach members telephonically. So in CHWs, we benefit from, as Denise mentioned, the trust factor that CHWs bring. They often live or work, or come from communities that they serve, they offer cultural understanding, language fluency for our members with limited English proficiency or those who do not speak English at all. Data supports that CHW programs have positive effects on health and quality of care, and that they, they address many of the social determinants of health in our communities, which we know impacts the delivery of health care. Blue Cross of Minnesota 
has a long history of work with CHWs. For quite some time, we've identified the challenge of the need to reach communities that are not receiving health care. Some of this is related to language barriers. Some is related to lack of trust of the medical community. And some is due to low health literacy. We partnered in the past with the Minnesota CHW Alliance to develop a certified curriculum. We worked with a community hub in Winona, which follows the Pathways Community Hub model, coordinating a range of community resources, of which healthcare delivery is just one part. The site in Winona is currently working on certification as a Pathways Hub model. The Pathways Hub model includes whole person, whole family, community care coordination, use of existing community resources more efficiently and effectively, coordination of community level outreach, engagement, and connections to social and clinical care, work with any population, measure and address local health risk factors, and comprehensive risk assessment, assigning pathways, and tracking and measuring results. In 2016 to 17, we had funded two community health worker positions in two Minnesota cities. We, we learned a lot from that previous work, which included improved reimbursement, providing CHWs with appropriate support. In 2019, we helped to fund a CHW registry and created a scholarship fund to encourage growth of CHWs. And here's what we learned from our previous work with CHWs. Sustainability it depends on the coordination of infrastructure. Historical partnership with C established CHW networks can increase deployment of new strategies. And collaboration and flexibility allows for continuous improvement. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Chris to uh, discuss what else we have done in, in this space. Thank Chris. you, Dr. Pendrick. Okay. Yes, this is Chris Wright, and I am excited to be here to highlight some of the additional work that we're doing in this space. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper and talk about some of our current initiatives. So given the very positive experience in our previous work leveraging community health workers in providing education, reaching out to members and building trust with vulnerable populations, we began working on an initiative related to emergency department utilization in partnership with WellShare International. And then COVID happened. We quickly had to pivot our work with WellShare and develop a different model together with the goal of bridging cultural and language barriers. We wanted to convey important information to members related to COVID-19 we wanted to connect with members in the community and connect them to member resources and close gaps and cure through education and through engagement. We felt certain that during the public health emergency that community health workers would have more success reaching our members. They know the community that they work in. They have established trust. They're local. We started this initiative uh, in our pivot with a dental three metropolitan counties in Minnesota and selected Spanish, Hmong, Somalian, and Karen speaking members for outreach efforts and quickly developed resource guides for the community health workers to leverage in their outreach. And then we hit the ground running. You know, at the same time, we wanted to ensure that we were creating sustainable models we did an analysis of the community health worker rate structure, and we wanted to be ensure that the overall level of reimbursement was reflective and covered actual costs of all the work uh, that we were asking the community health workers to do. We also focused on exploring how we could enhance the reach of community health workers throughout the state by exploring expansion of additional community hubs and we started work on developing a full enterprise-wide strategy in how we would use community health workers across different lines of business. So what were we seeing in the community? 
First, we knew that socioeconomic factors, physical environment, and health behaviors all impact the access and quality of care, which really made addressing social determinants of health more important than ever. We felt that this model was uniquely suited to make a difference. We learned in member conversations that members were afraid. They were afraid to seek in-person care. They were reluctant to seek resources to address their household needs, and they wanted more information related to COVID safety. What we observed through data was a dramatic decline in well child visits and immunizations. They were 20 to 30% lower in 2020 than what we had experienced in 2019. Initial results uh, indicated, well, we were very pleased with the initial results. Our engagement rate was approximately 35%. More than 14,000 members received outreach. That equates to about 3,400 households. Due to the community health worker outreach phone calls, two to 7% of members closed identified gaps in care, which was notable given the reluctance that we were hearing for, to seek care during the uh, public health emergency. We also saw positive results and claims data for pregnant women that WellShare had reached out to. The, the statistics are listed on this slide. 7.6% of pregnant women received timely prenatal appointments and postpartum visits. And an additional 4.7% of the members received their prenatal care, uh, prenatal immunization, such as influenza. We continue to evolve our programming with WellShare uh, with our Medicaid membership, but we're thinking broader. We first started with COVID education to include gaps in care, immunization, education, Again, continue to expand the outreach based on what we're hearing in the community. What we heard recently, members want to know where they can get vaccinated. We're enhancing the outreach program to help members, direct members to where they can secure appointments for their families, uh, offering transportation when and if it's needed. We heard through members um, through outreach that they um, had difficulty accessing COVID-related supplies. So if you take a look at the picture on the right of this slide, we quickly put together COVID care kit kits. Uh, it includes adult and child side masks, hand sanitizers, bar soap, and thermometers. We're continuing that program to make sure that we're getting these resources out to members. Uh, we intend to continue to work on leveraging community health workers for ER education, ensuring that members and families have secured a primary care home to access their medical needs. We are continuing to partner for future community hubs outside of the metro area. And we're continuing to seek certification for Minnesota pathway hubs, starting in Winona, which is a rural community, a rural hub, and also pursuing a hub in Minneapolis. So before we transition to the next speaker, I really would love very much to share a very quick member story. The complexity of trying to get medical care or any needed care is made even more challenging with language barriers, barriers not understanding the specifics of health care, um, and choosing providers and clinics. The member success story that we uh, received from our partner, WellShare, was from a member that had no support system. They weren't able to speak or read English. She was a 40-year-old woman with two small children and had recently had a stroke. She was still experiencing issues. Um, she needed additional help. She needed additional support. A community health worker through WellShare helped her access additional services that were covered by her insurance that included acupuncture, physical therapy to help alleviate her pain, and also directed her to community resources to help with other needs, helping her find a car seat for her child, food and clothes for her growing son. A second success story, and then I will wrap up, uh, that we received from a community health worker was that we had a Hmong man in his 50s that hadn't been to a doctor for more than a year. Him and his wife had been 
feeling unwell and unsupported and had not been making trips to their physician or refilling his medication. So he felt that he had no other option but to take his wife's medication. With the help of a community health worker, he was put in touch with a couple with the couple and was able to help the man reconnect to his preferred physician, get his medication refilled, and direct him over to community resources. So I will wrap up here and say thank you very much for having me today. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Fendrick and Chris, for sharing Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota's leadership in the community and just how quickly and successfully you were able to pivot your programming and partnerships to meet the needs early on in the pandemic. Uh, 